Marcus Freeman was introduced yesterday at Notre Dame's as Notre Dame's next head coach. Key, we carried that press conference live on uh, this Justin terrific new show, 2 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Handsome host. Key, I, I, you know what he said at one point, Jay? He goes, the kind of stu- athlete that's here, I forgot exactly how to phrase it. He said, they're not looking for anything easy. Like he acknowledged right away, it's a certain kind of student athlete that goes to Notre Dame. Key, you made this point when Brian Kelly went to LSU. It's like, well, ne- you know, it's not like recruiting at Stanford or Notre Dame. Jay, you went to Duke. You mm-hmm. understand this. What did you guys, what was your impression of the, of his introduction? I thought it was fine. Um, I thought he he held everything the way that he needed to. Uh, he certainly had a presence, a young head coaching presence. Uh, this is a hell of a job for a first-time head coach. I mean, he's climbed the uh, coaching ranks really fast. And one thing that I would tell Marcus is whatever you do, do the same things that you've done to get you this job. Don't change. Don't all of a sudden become a head coach. And what I mean by that is forget how you got there. Start changing the way that you prepared your defense, the way you approached the players when you went into their homes and recruited them the way you talked to them and dealt with them once they got on campus. Don't change that approach. Because if you change that approach, players see through that, and they'll smell it. And then that's when you get caught into this situation where you're not getting the best out of those players because they won't run through a wall for you because they think you are full of it. And it's easy for coaches and personnel people to start to change. You know, coaches are great. Oh, I love Jay. I'm the point guard coach, and blah blah blah. Now I'm elevated to the head coach. Yeah, Jay, you know, he's, uh, yeah. power that's how they, corrupts. That, that's how they do. Oh, I'm the, I am the uh, uh, head of college scouting. Now I'm kicked up to the general manager, president of a team. And when I walk down the hallway, I look at you up and down, and it, that's what happens. So Marcus Freeman cannot do that. He's got to be Marcus Freeman. Jay. Oh, hey, Mike T is here. Guys, I was just accepting my uh, accolades for picking another game correctly on Monday Night Football. What's the record now? Eleven and two, but eleven and wow, two, pretty good. Look at you! <clears throat> look at you, Key. We're not in LA today, my friend. What does that mean? It's really thirty-nine cold. degrees. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm indoors, so I'm good. I mean, I'm fine till I go outside. Were okay. you impressed with Marcus Freeman at the intro at the introductory press conference? Yeah, and here's what I was even more impressed with: like when you talk to the coaches that were involved and around the Notre Dame situation, I think this is really similar to Ryan Day. If we go back five years ago, a legendary coach, Urban Meyer, steps aside, and they wanted continuity at Ohio State. And while some people knew Ryan Day, most people didn't, and it was about continuity, the support staff, the coordinators. Now it's about hey, Marcus Freeman's a great young coach that a lot of people don't know about. We kept Tommy Reese on the offensive side. We have continuity, and now sure. we can hopefully replicate what Ohio State did and have Marcus Freeman as our leader. I, I was going to say the two things that I think are impressive about it. Number one, if you watch the video that they have on social media of how all the kids reacted in the locker room when he gave that speech, you're like, okay, like there's buy-in. And you talk about continuity. You talk about Tommy Reese staying in his offensive coordinator, right? I think that helps with retention rate. Because if I signed up to the staff, like I came to Duke because I wanted to be coached by – You know, Johnny Dawkins, I wanted to be coached by Steve Wojciechowski. If Coach K somehow leaves and these guys are still here, they're part of the family that recruited me in the first place. So that that kind of continuity, I think, goes a long way from the player's perspective as well. You mentioned the Ohio State situation. Most times, often than not, when you have a successful program and the head coach of that successful program leaves for whatever reasons – whether you step down, whatever the case may be, they kind of hit the ground running when you keep it internal. You know, God, when it's a successful program, teams usually do well. I mean, they, they usually do well. You can Oklahoma, Lincoln, Riley. You can go all the way back to the Miami Hurricanes. When Jimmy Johnson left, they brought in Dennis Erickson, but he kept some of the foundation there. People was around the program. They went on to win national titles. Eventually, Dennis Erickson left. They kept Coker in his role. He continued to win. So it's something there at Notre Dame. They certainly could turn things around and and get to a national championship because I'm sure they understand that they got to lax some little bit of the administrative 
applications for student athletes to be able to get in. A key to that point, though, that's where I think it's a win-win. Marcus Freeman knows what works there. Like, he's yep. been there. He played at Ohio State. Like, to me, this looks like a destination job. And I wouldn't be surprised, guys, 10 years from now, we're talking about, hey, that great Marcus Freeman program at Notre Dame, the way we're talking about Ryan Day, because I think it's a really good fit. And I credit Notre Dame for being open-minded about the search. And by all counts, it seems like they got it right. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.